Um, and the next one is um, Don, uh, Donald Whelan from CBS Music. No sign of academic quality, but I would prefer to be called Don. Oh, good. I was hoping so. But I thought it said Donald here, so I thought I'd better <laughs> check first. Thank you. Um, Don. Yes, thank you. That goes up first, then this one. I can see you being hit by a paper wall, and I apologise for adding to it. <clears throat> um, I'll start speaking. You should have a picture in front of you, which hopefully will tell the th proverbial thousand words. Um, I'm speaking as an arts educator and a festival organiser. Um, I coordinated the Big Sing Secondary Schools Music ah. Festivals for over 20 years, and I initiated a Secondary Schools Orchestral Festival back in 2002, which is still going strong. You'll see some pictures of those in our town hall. I'd like to call for support for the institutions in the city delivering classical music, our orchestras, our choirs and our bands. I'd like to encourage you to strengthen your um, council elbows to reinstate the town hall complex complete with its betterment, an interesting word. <clears throat> I believe that there are plans to um, improve the sound of the James Hay <clears throat> to make it um, a music friendly place. It was never designed for music, it was designed for the spoken word. Mm. <clears throat> and I um, make a suggestion here that perhaps the James Hay could be reconstituted as, with a new name, as Symphony Hall. Rework the interior. We have a hall for the town, which is our town hall, and we have a hall for the symphony. And in terms of cutting costs and providing the CSO with a home and using the uh, dressing rooms out the back as their offices, I wonder whether that might be a, a convenient solution for a number of other problems that you obviously have to deal with in terms a of your idea. limited budget. <laughs> <clears throat> um, the auditorium is particularly useful for festivals. You should see in your pictures <clears throat> two sides. One. <clears throat> um, is me waving wildly at about um, six or seven hundred kids <coughs> for a couple of years there. Um, <clears throat> that uh, horseshoe configuration, putting all our folk, <clears throat> I don't know where Christ College always finishes up in the centre, but <clears throat> the whole thing about this is that <laughs> every school, and this is pretty important in a city where Smart, we sometimes beautiful. worry about what kind of a social class or classes we might be divided into, east and west and north and south and all that, <clears throat> I, it's absolutely fantastic if you look at that picture to see all those kids from every school working together, singing together, <clears throat> if I have my way in harmony, but I never do. That's a social message, I think, for our city. And it's the future, it's the future of the citizens of Christchurch. Mm. And those are the brightest and best of those who are going through our city. And where are they going to live? Over the page, um, that's me, by the way, that's not me, that's Willie Southgate, I think, <coughs> standing addressing the troops. But we've got such a wonderful place because you've got the horseshoe upstairs in front of the organ, and you can put thousands of singers there, literally, <coughs> and down below you've got a flat floor which enables us to have, as you can see there, up to a thousand kids playing instruments together with, in fact, the Christchurch Symphony in the middle of them. That's a connected community. So on we go. School cooperation, private state integrated for prize givings and graduations. The place is often full. I've seen comments that we don't need anything like that. We only need 2,000, we don't need a 1,500 seat or whatever, and then there'll be a slope floor, and then nobody will use it, anybody will complain. So keep to the plan that you've agreed to. Um, this lets our children be aesthetically formed. We've got primary, secondary, we've got tertiary festivals, we've got school prize givings, we've got all sorts of things. That place should be packed and will be packed. For five years, we've had no auditorium. There's been no choral orchestral gatherings. They've all had to go off to separate places or at a horrendous cost to, to hire the arena, which is hopeless as a musical venue. Um, we're told by one of our national politicians that we're going to be the sporting capital of New Zealand. <laughs> but Thanks. what about the arts? If Christchurch is to be a desirable location to live in, what quality of cultural life for our kids? Research shows, that's an easy thing to say, but I I'm not going to bore you with it, that the brightest and best job seekers, <clears throat> think Silicon Valley, want a city where their children will have great opportunities for their artistic talents to flourish and where there is a lively traditional art scene. Yep. We want people to come to the city, to live here. It's for their kids often. That's why they'll leave the big smoke overseas. They'll come back for an education here. What we can offer in Christchurch through a good town hall is the quality of life that they won't necessarily get in other parts. 
And finally, um, how do those of us who care approach the council with our input? People have talked about an arts policy. We're not, I'm never sure whose door. Is there a door that somebody like me who has a concern can bang on and irritate somebody even more than I am perhaps at the moment, all of you? Yeah, no. So that's all I wanted to say before we get to the prostitutes. Thank you. You are absolutely not irritating in any way, shape or form. Um, <laughs> But uh, you, 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 do you want to deal with the Manchester Street issue as well? Because whatever you, I mean, I, your I hands. Don't, I don't, you. don't want you to run out of time. as the only exactly. Thing. Nor do I. What would you want me to do? Um, well, you might as well carry on. And you then, may have questions on that. Yeah. or You want to do the lot? Yes, I know. But so has Pauline, and so have I. And you know. So carry I'll carry on. on. Carry on. Carry on with the prostitutes, right? Uh, I'm no, also... don't carry on with the prostitutes. <coughs> Sorry, they just sounded very funny. Yeah, right. <laughs> a, a, a good, a good, a good film series. Yes. <coughs> <videos>. um, <laughs> Uh, I'm musical director and have been for 46 years of CBS Music. That's Cathedral Blessed Sacrament, uh, to save a lot of space. Now it's St Mary's Pro Cathedral. Uh, now we're now in the red light area, um, but there's a lot of religious and concert us usage coming up. I'm aware that there aren't any easy answers to this, and, and law lawmaking is probably not the answer. Um, what's happening out in the street has a severe impact on our Pro Cathedral. The, the, the garden's full of condoms, syringes, blood sock uh, items and so on. And our um, sacristan has to go around picking them up every morning, which is a wee bit peeved about. Uh, there's lots of concerts. I've, I've, I think one of the bits of paper hopefully you've got in front of you shows another one that's coming up, and maybe you can show you the inside. But we can put 500 to six, we can put 600 people, in fact, in that building. Um, and uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of young people who are standing um, on Manchester Street waiting to be picked up. Well, I mean, really, is that what we want? Um, all the usage is going to increase. <clears throat> We're putting $1.5 million into a new parish and music centre right alongside this. It's going to be great for the city arts. It's going to be a home for lots of choirs and orchestras and whatnot. Uh, back in <clears throat> uh, 2012, um, Council came up with recommendations. I have the um, original document here. Um, if you're around at the time, it has some recommendations at the back. And it uh, suggested uh, rubbish bins, toilets, and lighting. That was 9-2-2012, uh, street prostitution is a residential part of Manchester Street. None of that seems to have happened. <clears throat> what could happen? Some suggestions. Uh, maybe a council clean-up crew, <clears throat> not necessarily any of you, every morning with gloves and bins before the early morning mass. No, well, they could come to the mass first. That'd be good for them. Uh, perhaps <laughs> provide a portacom bins as were proposed. That was going to go through, but Briscoes, who live around the corner and don't actually function on Manchester, uh, Manchester Street at all, said they didn't want it for some obscure reason. Really? So I'm told. The, the Christchurch Health Board has its headquarters over the road, and he said that the guy in charge of that said he'd be very keen to have it, and he's put extra lighting up to, to keep the way. He said lighting is, is the way to do it. Of course, the area is being gentrified. There's an upmarket um, furniture store, Frobishers, just over the road, with a very nice... Um, coffee bar for those of you inclined that way, uh, and there's a new um, apartment block being built. So as gentrification increases, maybe the prostitutes will move out. But we've got an immediate problem. Uh, what about the parking building? Somebody suggested that at one point, that that would be a logical home to provide things, less residential and shops, but, but I don't want to be a NIMBY. Uh, Christian duty, well, Jesus tried to look after the prostitutes. Um, there isn't a, a proposal within uh, the cathedral parish at the moment to put up a huge fence. I think that would create very bad vibes in terms of where the Catholic cathedral fits. Another ghetto. We don't need any of that. Again, how do those of us who care approach the council? Whose door do we knock on uh, is my question. In, mm. But thank you for the chance to be here. Oh, well, I, I know that Pauline wants to answer that last question. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, Don. So, you. you know, it is a difficult issue, and there is a lot of nimbyism. So, it wasn't just Briscoes who kicked up about any Portacom or Portaloo idea or anything like that. I'll tell you that. Okay. Um, but Ali and I have been working very hard on this. I'm aware of that. If you want to approach either of us at any time, that's fine. We'd, we'd welcome a meeting with you. Did you come to a public meeting that we had last year down in the function room about this? I've come to every meeting I could, together with other folk, saying <clears throat> how concerned we are about the impact on our place. Okay. Well, I'd love to have a meeting with you offline and have a chat. We are making progress, I believe. <coughs> I appreciate so, it. And, and thank you for cleaning up around your own building. And um, it would be nice if we could find some people to help you with that. Um, so you yeah, will be in touch. Thank, thank you. you. And, and uh, the other question yep. I had around the town hall, yep. it's a dumb one. How many did the auditorium seat? Two and a half thousand. Two and a half thousand. Thank you very An much. An ideal size. Okay. Um, uh, Tim and then Yanni. 
Um, thank you. I love the idea of the CSO or some organisation using it as a home. I just think it's, it's wonderful. I quite like the James, the James Hayes side of it. I know it's, you know, it was fit for the spoken word, and but I think to revamp it because there is a lot of work to be done there with the fly floors, etc. But I think. Earlier on, we had an issue with regards to the Isaac Theatre Royal. Its, um, uh, its availability is, is being really <coughs> tested because of the need. And to have two very high-class stages with fly floors, I think, is, there is certainly a need. Mm -hmm. But to have the CSI, I think, based the, or an organisation, to use that as a home, because there were areas in there that didn't work properly as, as they were originally designed for. So I think that's a really good idea. The, the other question with regards to, you mentioned Silicon Valley, and that we're getting more and more people working from home because of the ease and, and the technology, etc. And you struggle and say that Christchurch should be a city where people want to bring their families so they return. With regards to the arts side and the, and the children with what you do, what do you see the biggest challenges for you? Interesting that a lot of the homeschooled kids um, are the most involved in music. Okay. Parents see this as a huge priority. It's the lifestyle that they come for, not necessarily the money yeah. or the outdoor world. Okay. Yanni. I just, um, thank you for your deputation. I just wanted to check that you're aware that Council wants to remove the Horncastle Arena uh, and the shareholding of VBase, which own the Town Hall, from our strategic assets. It's, it's said that there's not, um, the Council documents state that it's not necessary necessary for council to retain ownership for the well-being of the community. Now, given your experiences in the past in terms of accessing the town hall, possibly accessing the arena for certain events, do you think it's important that council retains uh, strategic ownership of these, or do you think that that's something that could be rubbed? I'll, I'll make a, a brief comment on that. <clears throat> My wife and I were amazed in Seoul, Korea, to find um, two nights in a row the hall, the, the main concert hall in Seoul, full of um, an amateur, no pay, um, orchestra and huge choir. And each night, it was young people, all young people. My wife and I were by far the oldest in the audience. Asked some of these folks, how is it that you are here making this kind of music? One night was um, Mozart, Mrs. Lemons. The next one was the, uh, um, Beethoven Ninth Symphony, I think. They said, oh, the council does it. They, they, because they see the value of this kind of cultural activity for our age group, they let us have the, the hall at a, a reduced rental, <clears throat> and they provide an enormous creche just over the other side of the beautiful big plots in the middle of Seoul, where the young mothers can park their kids and then go and play music. And lots of young mothers and, and so on being, taking part of it. So that's, to me, those are the kind of things where the council can see itself as a lubricant for a good quality of life where it can help. And, and if, if, if things are privatised and become financially prohibitive because only the dollar will rule, <clears throat> you won't have orchestras and choirs which are... I mean, all those folk over there are not, not there because of money. And the CSO wasn't paid for the night that they played with the kids. So, right. Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you for the chance to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we're, we're, we're sort of a little bit behind schedule, um, but I'm going to suggest that we stop now for a break because if we don't stop now for a break, then councillors are not going to be concentrating um, on um, submitters. And uh, we'll see if we can um, make up some uh, time as we go. So if we could just um, grab a quick cup of tea and um, be back here at 3.15. Thank you.